Hello and welcome back to Console Cowboys. Before we hop into some live labs where you'll exploit your own smart contracts, we're going to take a look at a couple more examples to help understanding and also look at different ways to overflow a contract. On the screen here is actually a full example of the withdraw from the previous video. You'll notice that we're sending in an amount, so if we use the same values from the last example, we're sending in an amount of 5, and then we have the require statement, which we went over last time. So if we had a balance of 3, and we minus 5, we would end up with 98 in that previous example, which is greater than 0. So that is a true statement. Since we were able to pass the require check, we can now move to the next line. On the next line, we say, okay, let's send our amount to the receiver with the transfer function. So we're going to send the amount of 5, which is more than the actual sender has, which is the value of 3. Then, after that, we're going to update the balance of the sender. Now, the sender's balance was originally 3, as you know, but with the overflowed value of minusing the amount, the sender is actually going to end up with 98 as their balance. So the sender ended up with more money than they started with, and they were able to send money to the receiver, and they were able to receive more money than the sender actually had. Obviously, this is a really bad scenario. So that was the first example. I just wanted to go over the flow of a full function rather than the simple example. The next example is going to be that of an overflow. This one is called a batch overflow. It's when you're sending a batch of tokens to many users and you're not using safe math functions and it's easy to overflow. Even though the value is very, very large, if you're sending to a ton of users, you can easily go over the maximum uint value. So, for example, let's say we have 10,000 tokens in our account and we're using a five-digit number as our maximum amount. So, if we were sending... 200 users, 499 tokens each, your total sent would be 200 times 499, which is 99,800. That's a five-digit number. You would be okay in this scenario. However, if you had 10,000 tokens in your account and you were sending 200 users 500 tokens each, your total is then 200 times 500 or 100,000 tokens. Now, 100,000 tokens is a six-digit number, which creates an issue. We're now going to overflow, and the new total is actually zero. We've just overflowed. Now, how can we use this in an attack? So we're going to take a look now at another code example of how that would happen. This code example is an example of an overflow, and if we plug in the numbers from the previous scenario, you can get a good picture of how this would work. So the first line, or rather line two um, in the code editor, is uint total. Now uint total is the number of users, or users.length, times the number of tokens we're sending, which is 500. So if we have 200 users, as in the previous scenario, times 500 tokens, as you know, we have 100,000, which overflows the five-digit value and becomes zero. So now total is zero. And in line three, we're saying, well, let's require that the balance of the sender, which is 10,000, is greater than the total tokens we want to send, which is zero. So obviously that check passes, and we move to line four. And we say, well, let's take the uh, total number of tokens we want to send, and we're going to minus it off the balance of the sender so that we record that they sent X number of tokens and their value is decreased by that. So we're going to say, okay, well, the total tokens is 10,000. If we minus off the total of zero, which is the overflowed number, we now still have 10,000 tokens in the user's account. Even though in line six, we're going to run a for loop, which sends out 100,000 tokens. So line six just says, um, you know, we have 200 users. We're going to iterate through those users, and then in line 7, we're going to say, okay, the balance of the current user, which is i, as we iterate through, it's going to go 1 up through 200. So user 1 equals the balance of that current user plus the tokens, and we know the tokens value from line 2 is 500, so we're going to send 500 and update that user's balance. And we're going to go each user one at a time and do this. 
So we're not using the overflowed value to send. We're only using it for the checks and to minus off of the sender's total. So with this example, you can kind of get an idea of what can happen if these contracts are coded incorrectly, where you can introduce an overflow scenario. Um, you can take care of this with uh, safe math features. We'll show a little bit later. But right now, this is just the overflow scenario I wanted to show before we hopped into a live lab where now you guys are going to do a bit of coding and exploit your own contract with a completely different scenario. So as always, if you learn something, uh, hit the like button. If you want to learn more and keep uh, up to date of new videos, hit the subscribe button and we'll catch you in the next video where you're going to open up your own editor and do a little bit of hacking.